here? Yes, let's get out. Is it just you? Yes. No one else in there? No. So before we get into this video, let me just clarify that before I started hooking up to this thing or doing any of what you're about to see in this video, I went and banged on that door, went and banged on the wall back by the bedroom where the windows were open, by the way, yelling if there's anyone in there that we're going to take this thing away. And no response at all. Uh, obviously, I was going to have to get into it to release the brakes, but the door was locked. So I was like, oh, I'll just pop the door open when I got to release the brakes, go in then. No response from anyone inside. The situation in which this RV was left there kind of made sense that the door was locked. Uh, we always, always, always go through them to make sure no one's in them before we tow them away, obviously. But after what happened in this one, that policy is now kind of changing on my end to before I ever even start to touch it, whether I have to pry the door open, take a battering ram through it, hook a winch line to it, and rip the whole side of the thing off to get into it. I am going to be walking all the way through, making sure there is nobody in these things before I ever touch them because one, danger to whoever's inside, two, danger to me not knowing who's inside. In this case, really lucky. It was just as simple a situation as it was, which you will hear what that situation was later in the video. But knowing now that that whole time I was doing all that, there was somebody right inside there staring at me out those windows the whole time watching me and everything I was doing is a little unnerving because you never know who that person could be, what their intentions may be, or what they might think their options are in that situation. So uh, me and Greg, who you'll meet here in just a minute, had to talk about that too, of what we thought about that situation and how we'll be doing things a little different. So keep all that in mind and just know that the whole time I was doing what you're about to see, I had no idea there was someone in that RV looking out those windows, watching me, staring at me and everything I was doing. So uh, not the greatest feeling in the world, once I figured that out, but we'll make some changes in the future. All right, let's get to the video and let's get this thing out of here. So we got a mess going on here. Uh, we're up helping out at Litsis Towing up in Redmond today uh, to get this thing out of here and towed off to the scrap yard. So they had us bring up the Zach lift. They got a medium duty truck, it's really nice, but this is probably just a little too big for that. So uh, Greg is up the road grabbing another one with their light duty truck. I've got to figure this mess out and what's going on and then we're towing this off to the scrapyard to get dismantled torn apart and disappeared this thing's got the awning sticking out up here that's not a big deal we can tie that in the windshield's broken out of it on both of them that is a bit of a big deal because on rvs when the windshields aren't in them these ones are still kind of here so it might be okay but when the windshields aren't in them and you're towing them all that air blowing in creates air pressure inside that tries to blow the slides out of them and this one does have this one big slide right here that is part way out and this thing's totally dead no power of any kind so um i don't think it's going back in we'll strap it to kind of hold it in place the front tires all dry rotted to crap and low but the back tires on it actually look somewhat decent which is that side we're gonna tow it on it's got air ride suspension obviously flat uh they're right on both ends that's strange so we're gonna have to take the rest of that mud guard off there i looked under it earlier and without crawling all the way up under it looks like hydraulic disc brakes on it not air brakes despite the air ride it's got a cat diesel engine back here uh none of the jacks are down which is good because that'd be a problem so I'm just going to start by getting all the stuff off the side of it here, just throw it off into here so it can get cleaned up later, and then get that under reach down and hooked up to it. First things first, we get all this stuff off the side of it. Okay. Everything's off the side. Let's go get some underreach down. <laughs> we gotta stop that from happening. Surprised the generator hasn't gotten yanked out of it yet. Okay. Go in. Did that latch? Oh, it did, I think. We'll find out together when I hit the brakes. know what under there there's going to be to grab with the forks 
probably not a lot is going to be my guess. I know we're going to have to probably block up underneath the front, which means I'm going to want to chalk its wheels. So I saw some rocks stuck under the front tires, like that's what's holding it in place. And I've got to pick the front tires off the ground, so we'll stick some wheel chocks down here, right next to that uh, dog crap that's currently chalking the wheel. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I have a strange job. So come around this side. Chalk that one too. Okay. Let's back this truck up a little bit. Oh yeah, when I back up to the piece of junk, you work just fine. When I back up to my super expensive nice one that's not going to a scrapyard, the freaking camera locks up. Of course it would work like that. Okay. What am I getting into? Yep. We might have to go all the way back to that axle, which that's a long reach out there, but... We're just picking it by the generator cradle right now. Oh, we can go to that uh, air ride support, I think, maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Let me get out from under it before I pick it up. And I'll grab some blocks of wood and throw under there. No! Where are my blocks? I know where my blocks are. My blocks are at home sitting underneath my RV because of, on account of when I dropped it off all the tires, I haven't put them back on yet. Son of a bitch. Okay. That's not good. Let's stick some rocks under it. That'll work. Oh, so dumb. Ugh, it's a heavy rock. It's been sitting here so long, there's an imprint in the street. Okay. Let's go up a little higher for that one. stick on the other side although that one might sit on the curb right on the curb no it's gonna slip down into the curb I don't want to do that maybe that other rock that was over here <clears throat> Okay. Huh. Boom down. All right, we're off of it. It's staying in place. Well, what do we want to do other than go home? So, if this big bar here that's solid to the frame. We can fork that. 
I can get out to it, I might have to back the truck up a little farther. I do. Those super extended receivers I have sitting at home, this is what they're for. To help reach way out for stuff like that, RVs and everything where the wheels are way back there. They add another, about that far off the end for reach. Now that camera doesn't work. You heard me talk crap. Close enough. Now do I have my big steer tech forks in here? These ones might. This, oh, these ones, I do. Let's see if these will fit. It might be a tighter fit. Now let's crawl on the ground in the glass. No, they do not. Okay. We'll use our steer tech forks that are 100% not for this job, but they'll fit it. They are these guys, which I might have to flip my receivers over to make work. We'll see. These are specifically designed. No, these aren't the steer tech ones. Never mind. These are six by six and a half, six inch rise, six and a half spread. So my steer tech ones are at home. Good to know. All right, out we go. Uh -huh. I will 100% have to flip my receivers. I'm pulling the truck out and doing it out from underneath that thing. That's the smart thing to do in this situation. And then roll back under it. So we go forward. Why work underneath of that when we don't have to? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. So. There. Okay. My other pin's going to be up under here. under it again. I should have known that it was weren't going to fit like that and just done it from the get-go, but oh well. The camera's not working, so I'm just guessing. Yep, that'll work. And yes, I forgot that there. You. Ooh, I might see another thing I could do that would have saved me from having to flip those around like I did. No, I'll grab this. It'll be fine. Okay, I gotta get the other one in there. This one's gonna suck. Holy crap, can't believe I got that. Okay. Okay. 
both of these are backwards, so dummy. Tall fork to the inside, or four to the front. Get out from under the sketchy RV. Come on. Spin under and drop in. Yeah. I need that to go in farther. Like that. I think the other one needs to as well. Got it. Okay. Should have it hooked now. Oh yeah, we've got it. Now our brake set. Yeah, it's got parking brakes. Which is not what we want. Alright. Now we gotta figure that out. I need to get into it. That's what I need to do. So we're gonna make that happen. Yes, please get out. Is it just you? Yes. No one else in there? No. Okay, and you're all done? Yes. Okay. Holy crap. This is an Allison automatic. It's actually really good. It is an air brake, so we do have to air it up. Shit. Okay. So when we first got here, just for some context, we banged on the door, we yelled, we did all the things. No response. Nothing here. There's what we need. This is where we tie into the air system. Cool. Craig's here. He's got his gym. How's this one going? Okay, so far this is not the one we're taking up there. I gotta grab the other one. Up oh, so there. this you gotta take to your yard for impound and then switch? Okay. Yeah, the other one I got is easier to on the other one. Okay. Lots of air hose for this one. Now let's pull it all out here because we're going to need all of it. I'm gonna need my other air hose too to extend it. Maybe. No, we're gonna get just long enough. Cool. 
love it when that works out. <sighs> this. Oh, I got so lucky it's even the same fitting. All right, I'm gonna go supply air to this line and take my sweater off because it's hot because I'm actually working for once. She's coming right now, she's coming right here. Oh, okay. We got paperwork. All right, I'm about to put air to it and see if it releases. Does it sound like it's filling tanks? Yeah. This is Greg. Greg and his lovely wife own Litsis Towing. How'd you pull that off, by the way? Not the towing company, the wife. The wife? Yeah. God's forgiving. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, Greg, they have, they have Litsis Towing here in Redmond. If you're in Redmond and need any sort of towing or roadside assistance stuff, Litsis is the way to go. Like, 100%. So, I'm gonna go hit the valve and see if it opens them up. We got air ride suspension. Did it air up the bags too? Yeah, the bags are airing up. Nice, that'll help. Wait, no, no. Greg's the one who got me into this mess. So don't call Litsis for any of your towing. Because they make me do stuff like this. Yeah, you call Casey. <laughs> he loves this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. Where was the brake? It's down here. Oh yeah. Oh, it released. Cool. Now we grab our underreach. Okay. Now we make sure. Look at that. Okay. Now we just gotta figure out whether to pull axles or drive shaft. Probably gonna be stupid on this one. Since the motor's backwards, the motor's right there. That's well, that's the transmission. You can see the bottom of the motor's up there. The drive shaft goes from right there to right there on the other side of all of this crap. And this is that's the room you have to get to it. So I'm gonna pull an axle shaft out instead. And this is gonna be the one we're gonna pull. That's a problem. There it is. We're tilted way off to the side. I didn't think it'd be that full of oil. Come on. We just plugged it off. It'll be fine. Amazingly, the slide mostly retracted when I hit the button. And even more amazingly than that, I'll go down the road like that. I don't care. That's fine. But even more amazingly, I went in there and I hit the button. And this retracted completely. So. I think since everything's working and active, that'll be fine. Those windshields are there, so as long as they stay in place, it shouldn't blow too much air in and try to pop those out. Plus the windows are busted out of it. Okay, so we have a problem. This airline here broke off of, it's supposed to go to that fitting right there. And it popped off of there with the pressure on it. But if you look, that is just a, a drain to drain the tanks. So we don't need that. This is our pressure in. These are both tank drains. So I've got me 
some zip ties and I'm just gonna fold this over on itself and zip tie it together that way all the air stays in the tank so you see this line comes straight out of the tank right there so very simple fix fold that line in half to kink it this is not a DOT approved fix by the way but this is a Casey needs to tow some shit type of fix that's what we're gonna go with today we do have a scale we're going through but it'll be fine I don't even know if they're open. I'll zip tie this one to that. That way they're held together. Alright. Airline fixed. Next we're getting some tires aired up here because these ones are very much low. And once the air is done on that tire, we'll plug it back into the the charge port right here this is actually so you can run air off of the unit to air up your tires and do stuff but we can back feed it right into the tanks just the same and it releases all the brakes so uh, you can start the engine from back here that's cool Greg's back with the motor home that he's taken the other one had to go to the impound yard for its 30 45 days whatever this one's coming out of the impound yard going up and we're gonna caravan up together I don't know why your truck color is the same as mine. Because you copied my coolness. I'll let you think that. <laughs> Slides in. Woo! Do you know how I did it? Shove it with the truck? No, no, no. I went inside and I found the button that said slide and I pressed in and it went. Look at you! Yeah! I, it took some thinking, oh. but I did it. Same thing with the awning. The awning went most of the way in on its own. I just went in and I pushed the awning retract and it folded all that up. It has power to the batteries. So now we're just airing up some tires and then we're good to go. I pulled out axle shafts and then uh, I, I know you like physical labor. I end up in a lot of physical labor. We'll call that. Okay. You know you and I have a disease, right? Yeah, stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's called too dumb to say no disease. Yeah, that's the truth. So hey, uh, people on here have messaged me asking if I am hiring. I am not, but Greg needs some drivers if you want to do this stuff on the regular. This is probably not the way to advertise it, is it? Thanks for the, <laughs> the No, but they do actually like really good stuff. Like they do like, well, you're like the guys in the area for like the high end cars and nice stuff. Yeah. Here's the rule, if you want to work for Greg, and mainly Crystal, because Crystal is really the boss. Greg works for Crystal. Um, I just work here. Yeah. <laughs> Two rules. You have to like nice equipment and keep it nice, right? Keep it clean. Yeah. And you have to like working for good people and be in the Redmond area. That's three rules. Yeah, I can't three count. Rules. Either way, we're aired up and then we're going to caravan out of here. So I couldn't figure out how to get this door to stay down because there's nowhere to put a hole for a bungee. And Greg came up with the best idea ever. <laughs> We really have fun at doing this. Problem solved. See? Just don't tell anybody that. Yeah. Especially <laughs> the boss. <laughs> Alright, we're ready to go uh, try our luck at Scale House. You're in a little truck. You go right by. Yeah. I'm going to get over next to you on the road and just like push you in <laughs> into the exit. You going to pull that truck? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, that is a pretty truck. Because it looks so much like mine. I to be fair, to be fair. They were his colors first. That's right. No, yes. red was mine first. No, red I, is mine first. That's just red. I had red, white, and black. Yes. Originally, yours were all white. I had red, and then you did the red, white, and black, you and then I did the red, white, and black. Uh -huh. So you copied me, so I copied you back. Oh my God. Wait a minute. So as you can see, it, it is brutal competition between the tow companies around here. We, we we really don't like each other at all. Just mortal enemies from the get-go. So I just brake check him. Alright, 
Well, we are not at the scrapyard. We're back home. Uh, we went to the scrapyard, got all that stuff dropped off. No problems at all there. Everything went smooth and easy. Yes, those are tank steps. And uh, then I went and did a whole bunch of other stuff, and now I'm back home. So you're probably wondering, and a lot of people have probably already commented, there's something on your lens right there. No longer. I uh, probably already commented about uh, how we just totally kicked that lady out of our RV and took it from her. But that's not at all what happened, and yes, I did wait till the end of this video to address that fact so that those comments were already made, and then the algorithm sees that, sees audience engagement, and it helps further this video up in the whole algorithm level thing. But there's a trailer right here, so I'm going to sit on it. What the story is with that RV is that it's not that lady's at all. That's why she had to just get out and walk off. Uh, that RV was lived in and belonged to an older gentleman who lived there on the street with it. And the city has outreach workers, the county has outreach workers that go out, they talk to these people, they know who they are, they check up on them, they know what's going on out there. And this guy was not in the best of health shape, so he ended up getting placed into hospice where he is now and probably will stay. So you also probably noticed that this RV didn't go to impound, it didn't have the 30 day hold, it went straight from the street to the scrapyard and that is because this gentleman who owned it voluntarily gave it up to be hauled off and scrapped because there's no value to it. He knows that. He's in hospice now. He's never going to be able to go back to living in it. And uh, he voluntarily gave it up to do that. That's how it got to skip the whole um, impound and 30-day hold and title possession thing like that. That Like the other one that Greg hauled off had to go to their impound yard. The one he ended up hauling up there came out of their impound yard after it had gone through the whole title, lien sale process, all of that. That is the story behind this RV. That lady there had nothing to do with that thing. She's someone who saw an empty RV sitting there and hopped on in it. And that is a big problem with a lot of these RVs you see out in the woods and stuff like that when we do these cleanups. It's how stuff ends up like that is someone will abandon something or have to leave it for some reason we don't know. Like this guy had a legitimate reason for having to leave that thing there. Uh, he, he had no other option. And this guy kind of did the right thing it's unfortunate that he was in that situation in the first place, but he kind of did the right thing by telling the city, take it, scrap it, get rid of it. But in just that little bit of time, someone else moved into it. And that, that happens to these things very regularly where the person who last lived in it could be two, three, four, ten different people down from whoever put it there or originally got rid of it, abandoned it, whatever. There's no telling whose is what and who used it last and who's in it now. It, those things get passed around and traded through so the best thing that can happen once they get abandoned or given up or are done with like this one was is for them to get cleaned up and hauled off as quick as possible because if they get left to sit that type of things happens it'll get moved over here it'll get moved over there this person will take it move it over there then they'll end up out in the woods in just a pile of mess and contamination and problems so the quicker that stuff can get hauled off the better for everybody. That one luckily got to skip a whole bunch of the, the paperwork process because the guy voluntarily gave it up. Uh, unfortunately, someone else got to it first before we did. That's why she just straight walked off with nothing because nothing in there was hers. So that is the backstory to it. Either way, we got it done. Let's just towing up in Redmond. Awesome people are looking for drivers if you're interested and like nice trucks, way nicer than mine. Nicest trucks in this whole this side of the Cascades, I would say, probably in Oregon. They, they got nice stuff, and they take care of it. So if you're into that kind of thing, great people. Go check them out. Also, if you're a Redmond need towing, roadside assistance, stuff like that, they're the people to call. That's going to be it for this one. I think I'm going to give that truck a bath and then go take a shower myself, and we'll see you next time.